What's up everybody? I am Tayana. For those of you who either know me personally or have been following me on social media, you know that I am one of those people that I love family. I love family history. I love culture. I love my culture in particular. And so I've been um, really just digging deeper into that because I really want to be able to pass this information down to my children and have them uh, pass it down to their children and so on. So I've really been digging, digging deep into my Gullah Geechee culture. Um, and I really wanted to just highlight some of the historic landmarks in the places where my family is from. My family is from North Carolina, the southeastern North Carolina. So like right on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, like literally at the water. And so a lot of the stuff that you see. Well, first of all, let me backtrack in case you haven't seen any of my other videos. You have no idea what I'm talking about. I am a descendant of Gullah Geechee people. The Gullah Geechee people are the basically the enslaved Africans that were brought over here from the West African coast over to the coasts of North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida to help cultivate things like rice, indigo, sea island cotton, and like peanuts and stuff. So I come from them folk. And um, the thing that makes Gullah Geechee people unique is because a lot of the sea islands were like just kind of off and, and isolated from everything else. So the white folk couldn't get over there and bother them. So they were able to maintain a lot of their various African cultures and basically merged them together to create the Gullah Geechee language and culture, basically. So, um, yeah. So Gullah Geechee is the people, it's also the language. Gullah being like the language that like the elders speak and then Geechee being like kind of a modernized version. And when we talk about Gullah Geechee people and culture, you hear so much about South Carolina, you hear so much about Georgia, you hear about Florida, but you don't really hear much about uh, North Carolina. And I think that is, uh, it's probably for a host of reasons. A lot of people, a lot of our elders have gone on and didn't really pass down the tradition to us. And we just got bits and pieces here and there. And we're, you know, putting the pieces back together on our own. Um, but I'm very fortunate to still have some family members that are still living in the area and that are elders and can share stories with me and language with me and customs with me. So um, I really just wanted to kind of go on a journey just to kind of discover more about who I am. I think that is so important. So if you have questions about what the Gullah Geechee Heritage Corridor is and all that kind of stuff, you can Google it. They have a website. They have a list of places in each state. North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, like they have landmarks that you can visit. So I just visited the ones that were in the North Carolina leg. Um, there are so many people that are out here now who are sharing so much information about Gullah Geechee culture. You've got the Geechee experience. You've got Sun Michelle. You've got so many people that are doing the work to really preserve the culture. And it is so dope to me. Um, so yeah, if you got other questions, like I ain't that... I ain't doing that, but they are. And so you can see, you know, say you can go to their channels and go to their social media platforms and check all that out. But yeah, so here we go. I'm, I hope you enjoy. Well, we are in Panda County, David's fussing at the dog. So remember I was telling you guys that the North Carolina leg of the Gullah Geechee Heritage Corridor of, you know, is, um, Jacksonville, which I don't know that name of that county. I don't really remember. Onslow County and then Pender County, and that's where we are now. And then there's New Hanover County and then there's Brunswick County. So after we stop here, we're gonna head to um, New Hanover County and then we are gonna go to Brunswick County, which is where my folk and them from. And we are gonna go see my granddaddy and do some stuff. But fun fact, so like people from Charleston and stuff, Y'all got Roger Wood sausage, which I love, but we y'all got Roger Wood down. Yeah, we got uh, Pender sausage. So that's like our Roger Wood. So anyway, here we go. So the, I don't know, baby. So the, um, 
the mute this they turned the you know they turned the plantation house into a museum but it's closed for the winter but if you look you can see some of the like slave quarters here and uh yeah so what is this i don't know babe. let's go see so um We'll look at the horse in a second. So yeah, all this is um, closed off for the winter apparently, but this okay. is one of the places that's listed on the places to go in North Carolina according to the um, Heritage Corridor. So my goal is I would really like to travel the entire corridor just for fun, but we're not gonna do that today. I um I personally feel that when they turn these um plantations into museums, black people should get free admission. Right? Yeah. These are all the places in North Carolina where like Gullah Geechee people lived on the Tayana show during slavery. So our ancestors and stuff were here. They weren't living on the Tayana show, but because of them, there can be a Tayana show. Amen. Okay, so where we just left was <laughs> miles. Where we just left was Poplar Grove Plantation in Pender County, the town in, in two miles. Take exit 17 onto NC 133. This is like the kitchen area. This is very creepy. Okay, so they allow you to go into the slave quarters, so that's where I'm about to go. Yo. two-story um, building and it was nine enslaved Africans that lived here including the lady that was the cook of the home who my lord who Jesus my heart I wish I could cuss on this vlog, but I'm not going to, but as I have a lot to say. <laughs> so this is another bedroom. It's got a fireplace. <sighs> this is just another one of the, I'll take a picture of it later. Now, if you go on Ancestry.com, which is what I've been doing, you can find these and you might be able to find your family. I was able to find a lot of my um, families, like slave owners and stuff and like the schedule and all that. Okay, here's the last bedroom. I've never seen like slave quarters that was two story. This was someone's room? Hold on. Hold on. It's 
My face is still greasy. Now we are in Navassa, which is... In 4.5 miles, the destination is on your right. 2024 Cedar Hill Road, Northeast. All right, so here's Reeves Chapel. They are actually... They're working on it because it looks different than the last time. Last time I think we came, they had the windows. So they took the windows out and boarded up the doors and added stuff here. But one of my ancestors um, is named, it was, found, he was the pastor, basically. He lived to be a hundred and, not 120. How old he lived to be? Like 102 or something like that. So I'm about to go around in the back because I think there's a cemetery back here. I'm going to see if I don't get in trouble if I can come back here. just left uh, one of the cemeteries. I didn't think it was appropriate for me to be filming in there, but I found three grandfathers um, and my great, great, I found my great, great grandfather, my great, great grandmother, my great, great grandfather on the other side. Um, and the grandfather that was the slave owner is also buried there. Um, and then I saw my two aunties and uncles that lived in Nevada that that um, were the root workers in the family and also conjure women, I think, the ladies. Um, and so I left them all offerings and cried. And now I'm about to go into Southport and give me some seafood, right? Yep. Okay. I just made an Instagram post about this painting. That's my aunt in the painting and it's like a famous painting in North Carolina. So we're here at the John N. Smith Cemetery and, um, and then this is my uncle, Nehi Gore. His real name is Elias, but he was seven foot eight inches tall. So um, they called him Nehi. <laughs> so I'm gonna go pay some homage to some of my family. Back in the day, this used to be all black people. <laughs> so that was it. That was just my my time down in uh, down in the coast where my family's from. Um, I just have such a great deal of pride in who I am, and I I think it's so important because so many black people, everything around us is showing us that who we are is not enough. Who we are is bad, and that we have nothing to be proud of. And a lot of people use that excuse like, "Oh, you don't even know what part of Africa you come from." Uh, so a lot of us do, but even if we don't, we know we come from West Africa and African Americans, we embody all of those cultures, all those African cultures within us. Because if you do the DNA, which I did, it's like almost every country, a bunch of West African countries all in one. And that's what, that's who the Gullah Geechee people are. It's just a collection of uh, amalgamation of these cultures that had to come together because they had to be able to communicate with one another because they were all from different cultures and they didn't speak the same language. So they came together and created their own language. So if anybody ever says to you, black man, black woman, black people don't have culture, African-Americans don't have culture, huh? I know you lying. Anyway, thank you for watching. You can follow me on Instagram at Tiana Elisa. You can subscribe to me on here if you want to, but most of the things that I post, they're going to go to my Instagram because I'm not like, I don't be vlogging like that like I used to. Y'all already know. So anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.